You know, it doesn't feel like it was that long ago when I had my first snowmobile trip out here. And when I came out, there was this like sudden onslaught of snow. There was this snowstorm that just kind of like hit as I arrived. And it was a phenomenal trip. And it was such a treat. And I love that stuff. Today is the exact opposite. It is 30 degrees Celsius in the sun here right now. I cannot believe it. I'm telling you, when I showed up, I did not expect the thermometer to say that. What an incredible way to bookend this season. This is gonna be my last winter trip. I'm pretty certain, you know, it would, it would be a little bit of a miracle if I can get out here again uh, before everything melts. So I'm, I'm, I'm calling it my last trip at this point. Snowstorm on one end, heat wave on the other. So you can see the temperature in the tent right now is like 40 degrees Fahrenheit, five degrees Celsius. So a lot cooler when in the shade. Okay, so another gift. This one right here comes from Labrador, from Jerry Dyson, the guy who built my stove, my one of a kind stove. And he, he saw my video where I complained about the backdraft and he looked at the uh, the rain cap on my on my chimney and he said okay I'm gonna get you something better because there was a bit of a vortex happening a lot of the smoke was coming back down in one day when it was really windy and he said we can stop that so what he has here is um, like a, a wind protection right here you can see and then on the inside You'll see the smoke will come out here. So yeah, this is really, really, really nice and way bigger than I thought it would be. This is actually quite big. So I'm happy about that because uh, you know, if it was too small, then you know, you'd have maybe issues with creosote buildup. So what I'm gonna do is just take off this part right here and let it come back down in. I'm gonna drop it to a point where it's balanced, but a little bit tippy. I want it to be like, maybe even a bit more tipping down. So that way when I go to the outside of the tent, there we go, that's perfect. I'll have easy access pulling off the old cap and uh, putting on the new one. And not a lot of creosote. Oh, that was barely on there. Whew. man look at that fit perfect so easy it just slides on no problem this thing is beautiful that was easy quite a bit of creosote in the old uh, rain guard and not a lot though like not a concerning amount at all and but look it's pretty beat up and the one I have now is just of much higher quality and I expect it to actually last the life of you know the the tent really let's test her out and get her going right away
So the last video I made, I asked you guys to remind me to bring water. This is going to be my summer supply of water. And I've got uh, three cases here. And so, that should be more than enough. I'm, ex I'm expecting to be out here once or twice a month. And maybe I would drink like eight bottles in a trip. I've decided to leave my 1500 Jackery here for the summer. Because I'm going to need it. So this is uh, a gift, a really nice gift from Crystal. Uh, she's a great girl and, and she decided to cross stitch me my new logo. And so the logo represents a jay in the woods. And you know, it's kind of like a play on a day in the woods. Who wouldn't want to go spend a day in the woods? Well, I'm a jay in the woods on Instagram. And uh, so I decided I would just go with that. I have the, the cursive, you know, the, the letter J there with the spruce trees and a little bit of snow on the spruce trees and then of course the tent and uh, when crystal saw that i was working on a logo she decided that she would make me a cross stitch and then when she gave it to me she said maybe that would look good in your tent and i thought yeah definitely it would look good in the tent
love this toasting on a paper towel trick. It works really well. And sometimes the paper towel, depending on how hot your stove is, obviously, will turn brown like right away and you'll have toast really quickly. It doesn't take long. And uh, it just doesn't catch on fire. Now, if it gets really, really brown really fast, and sometimes I'm a little bit worried about it, and I'll, I'll keep a really close eye on it because you don't want to have really burnt toast and a little fire outside of your stove. But for the most part, it works really well. So if you're going to try it, you need a flat surface, some paper towel, lay it down, perfect toast. And uh, I learned this at uh, Jerry's Cabin in Labrador. And uh, he showed me this and... I thought it would never work, but sure enough, it does every time. I love beans and ham. Beans and wieners, too. Those are good. It's a bit of a lunch for me today. I slept in, and I knew I was going to because it's my last weekend here, and I'm just taking my time. I'm just really relaxing. And so I woke up at 7.30, and I was up for a bit, put some wood on the stove. I was sleeping well, and then just lay back down, and I slept till 10.30. <laughs> I... I would like to get up earlier, obviously, when I'm out here for the most part. But on this trip, I'm just really just relaxing. So I walked all over this tent looking for a signal. Like, sometimes you get a signal in certain spots. And right now I have a bit of a signal. It's a, it's a little bit problematic. It's like coming in and out, stopping and going, but that's okay. I'm watching the Raptors play Philadelphia in the playoffs. And I'm a huge Raptors fan my favorite sports team uh, by far and I rarely ever miss a game so I found a spot where there's a little bit of signal it's right here and I'm just gonna leave it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch anything it's gonna come back I know it's gonna come back and I'm just gonna sit here drink a coffee take in the game and then I have to go um, over and tear down the bear tent this afternoon. I got to take it all down, so we'll see how that goes. Everything's still in really good condition. The tent has faded a bit, being out in the sun for so long. The sun comes back really hard at, uh, at this time of year. So you can see that the tent, this is its more natural color and it's become a little redder after sitting in the sun for so long. But that's okay, the material's still really solid. All right, let's go in. This tent did a phenomenal job surviving the winter, but it's time to take it down. And uh, I just want to take it down for, for the season. I didn't want to leave it up for the whole entire summer uh, because I feel like underneath here, we're gonna collect water 
due to uh, just water building up on this platform. And then um, I don't want the tent to get moldy and that's, that's possible. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it down for the summer from this location anyway. And maybe I'll use it this summer in, in other locations, but for now it's, it's gonna go home and I'll dry it out because it's a bit wet. I'll dry it out at home and uh, should be good to go. Definitely need to empty it. I love this stove so much. It did a tremendous job this winter keeping this tent super warm. I'm gonna put these, this little protector here. Just to protect the, the window for travel. This is the Caminus L stove. This little stove does a tremendous job heating up this tent. Like it was minus 40 out here this winter when I was with this stove and I had this tent up to 40 degrees uh, Celsius, plus 40 degrees Celsius when it's minus 40 outside. So that's like minus 40 Fahrenheit outside and then like almost 120 degrees Fahrenheit inside. So it, it does a really good job. It's a nice slow burn too, which I really like because it has a baffle in it. And that window that I just covered up radiates like an excessive amount of heat. It's as hot as you can imagine. It's almost like you have your hand on the flame. So they're pretty neat little stoves. I, I really like them, stainless steel. They get this cool coloration that happens. And uh, I like that because it shows it's being used. shield for the bottom. I was wondering what that noise was.
they've got these little handles at the end that give you leverage when you pull off. So that's a really cool thing about these cots because I've had cots before that were a real pain to, uh, to take down. But these have a nice handle that allow for you to do it easily. Simple. Now this tent connects to this padded floor. This is an insulated floor, and I had this tent sitting on the floor for the whole winter, so my concern would be, even though the tent does come out over top, rain would be falling down, seeping underneath throughout the summer, and molding this up. Pretty windy out today. Hopefully this tent doesn't blow away once I have all the legs out. Okay. Let's see if I can get this down in one go. I'm gonna put this big rod in. And then I have to, I don't know. <laughs> I push it, I don't wanna take that out. Okay. I'm not gonna keep the camera in here for this because the tent's gonna collapse on it. Okay, I might have done some of that wrong, but that was easy. I just went and it was done. It's crazy to think that the bear tent's down. Really hoping I'll be putting it right back here next winter. That's my plan. Four months, four months this tent stood here. And uh, it's in perfect condition aside from a bit of UV rays changing the color of it but I think that's to be expected. So, yeah, it's over for now, but the Russian bear tent will be back. I promise you that. I've got a couple now. I'm really looking forward to using them. Uh, there just has been a bit of a pause and uh, there's a good reason for that. I'll, I'll, I'll link you to a video that explains why I've paused um, making videos with the Russian bear tent for now, but I guarantee you I'll be back I love the company. Um, I think they're good people. I have a very good relationship with them. And um, yeah, it was a great winter here. Some of my best videos ever were made in this Russian bear tent. And I just cannot wait to get back at it. And uh, yeah, but for now, I just needed to do this to prevent it from getting moldy throughout the summer. I got this old rusty pan at the other campsite. And you can see it's got some rust. Pretty good rust there. I'm thinking if I just throw it into the fire for a while and just let it sit in the fire. Cause you know when you like season a, a pan at home, a cast iron pan to get rid of the rust, you oil it and then you put it in the oven. So I'm gonna oil this. I'm gonna put it in there. Just let it sit in the fire for an hour or two and see if that can somehow like get rid of the rust. Well, that's doing a good job just by itself. Now I've oiled my stove.
So what I did there was I put the rice into that, as you saw, that chicken grease. I was not letting that chicken grease go to waste. And this rice is going to be like the most flavorful rice of all time. Also, I have a bit of that uh, sweet chili Thai sauce there. I love that on chicken. So, oh man. Mm. That rice is really flavorful. It crisped up a little bit, so it's crispy on the... Some of them are... <clears throat> choking. Some of them are crispy, and some of them are perfect. That is a real treat right there. Mmm. Oh, man. I love soaking up grease, like pork grease, steak grease, with my rice. I find it just makes the rice that much better. Mmm. What a meal. What a meal. Yes. You'd be surprised how well coarse uh, snow will clean a cast iron pan. It's good. I need to have wood for the summer. I still have a lot left at home from my winter supply. So I just brought out a bunch and hopefully this will help me get through the summer. Um, more specifically the fall. It's been in there for a while. I'm gonna let it cool off naturally. And then I'm gonna oil it again 
It looks like it got rustier, believe it or not. So I threw the cast iron pan into the fire a couple of more times last night and it's really starting to clean up nicely. I'm going to keep it in there again today. You can see that the iron is just really starting to come out now. And I'll have to I'll have to oil it for sure. But there's only a couple of rust spots now. It's getting there. It's pretty cool. I need to charge this thing to full power. I uh, I want to be able to come back, you know, later on in the in the year in the spring and just have it ready to go. So right now I'm at 69%, and I just want to be able to have this thing ready to go when I get back. Well, what a weekend, man. This was a phenomenal weekend. The weather was perfect. I got some stuff done. There's still quite a bit I need to do. I got to get this camp down to a point where it's pretty much bare in here, as bare as I can get it. So that way, if any animals come in here, they're not going to want to hang around because there's just nothing for them to do and nothing for them to eat. The only animals I've dealt with so far are bugs in here and I know like a little mouse or a shrew has gotten in because it went into my little uh it went into here and it's actually this guy here he chewed he chewed on this right here a little end to my uh to my tongs and so what I do now is I have these like little alcohol wipes and I just throw an alcohol wipe or two in there with the silverware and the cutlery um, and all the utensils before I go. And that gives off a really strong scent. So any, any like little shrews or mice or whatever, 
that are hanging out in the tent that want to like explore will stay away because that's just such a, a potent smell coming off of those alcohol wipes. You know, I've been thinking, I'll tell you guys right now, I've been thinking, I could maybe walk it next weekend if I wanted to. <laughs> I, I know I won't be able to snowmobile. It's going up to 10 degrees Celsius uh, this week, which is like 50 degrees Fahrenheit in that in that range. So that's, uh, that's going to be really warm and that's going to destroy the trails. And so I don't want to snowmobile over the, over that. And there's one trail that's, you know, probably close to a kilometer long, uh, a portage between, between lakes. And I, I don't want to be doing that with my snowmobile, but I could walk it and I could walk the lake. Now the problem with walking the lake is the top is going to be really, really soft. So it would be a bit of a slog coming out here, walking in that, right? In those conditions, I'd, I'd probably be sinking quite a bit. Now there is a part of the lake that has a really nice snowmobile trail on it. That will be nice and hard that I'll be able to, to walk on easily. It's just this, this lake. The only person who really travels on this lake, especially into my little corner of the lake is me. So, uh, the trail isn't hard enough for sure for me to, for me to walk on. But what do you think? Should I, should I go for it? Should I try to walk it out next weekend if it's safe? Man, I'm addicted. I gotta say, I'm addicted to this place and I'm always addicted to the next video. It's like, oh, what's my next video gonna be? And I know like lately it's just been me coming out to the tent and just being out here. This is where I wanna be and I bring my camera and I know it can get repetitive, believe me. I know that the channel can get repetitive. You'd be seeing a lot of the same thing over and over again. But, uh, but since I'm out here, right, I might as well make videos. And, um, and if I ever get that cabin, man, if I get approved for a cabin, and I reached out to them earlier um, this week, and they said, you're going to be waiting. Everyone's waiting. You're going to be waiting. It's been well over a year. Now, I'm really hoping I can get approved. That would change this channel because I wouldn't know what I'd be doing. I'd be relying on you. I'd be relying on just my, my instincts, I guess, what I think would make sense. I'd be YouTubing quite a bit, I'm sure, how to do it. And then I'd just go for it. And you guys could watch a guy who literally uh, has no idea about building cabins, just go for it in the woods. And that's, that's what it would be. It'd be like, I'm building a cabin and I don't know how. That would be the theme of that series for sure. By the way, if you're interested in my sleeping bag, it's called The Beast by Chinook.
Potatoes are still a bit firm. I know what half of you are going to say right about now. No, Jay. Don't do it. Don't put ketchup on that meal. You're going to ruin that meal. The other half of you are saying, yes. Yes, put ketchup on that meal. And that's what I just did. Winter season is done. I had a great time. Thanks so much everybody for watching this year. It was a phenomenal, phenomenal winter. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I can't wait to be back here and, and I'll be back as soon as I possibly can. Uh, that I know for sure. So anyway, thanks so much. I'll be back really soon. Yeah.